Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're covering this new fungus that seems to be spreading rapidly throughout the world, particularly in healthcare settings, and it is resistant to many common types of treatment. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dr. Dustin, and today we're talking about Candida auris, this fungus that is causing quite a high number of deaths compared to previous years. We're gonna talk about why this is a major concern to the public and to healthcare professionals. First of all, just to get it out of the way, this is a very different type of fungus than the cordyceps that has become well known due to the popular TV show, The Last of Us. So what is Candida auris? It is a fungus that can cause serious infections in the blood, brain, skin, and other parts of the body. What makes it particularly concerning is that it is resistant to many of the common antifungal treatments that doctors prescribe. Some cases have been what we call pan-resistant, meaning they're not responding to anything, and it's estimated that 30 to 60% of individuals who are infected with Candida auris could succumb to the disease. So how is Candida auris spread? Well, it is spread through contact, so either with contaminated surfaces or another individual that has the infection, but thankfully we're not seeing it being spread through bites. If you have to get bit to be infected, then who bit the first person? Now, thankfully, this has been primarily found only in healthcare settings, so this is not affecting the general population who are out and about doing their daily activities. It's particularly concerning in the healthcare setting because these individuals are immunocompromised, meaning they're not only susceptible to fungal infections, but these individuals are susceptible to viral infections and bacterial infections, essentially all microorganisms, because their immune systems are just not that strong, and they're bombarded with many more things in the healthcare setting. These individuals in the healthcare setting often have IVs and other things that access the inside of their body that are not normal to people walking around in the day-to-day -day life. And so if you have a port in your neck or your chest or an IV, that's an extra portal of entry potentially for fungus, viruses, and bacteria. And these are some of the reasons that individuals in healthcare settings are much more susceptible because they have extra ports of entry into their body and their immune systems are frequently not as strong as those who are out walking around in the daily world. Although Candida auris has been around since 2016, we do seem to see an uptick in cases, but this is nowhere near the number of cases or the rapidity of spread that we saw with COVID-19, for example. The number of cases is still probably under 3,000, although it may be underdiagnosed because it is difficult to isolate in the laboratory. As I researched online, these are the top three questions that I found people were asking about Candida auris. Of course, everybody wants to know if you have an infection, what are the symptoms of Candida auris? Well, it can be a wide range of symptoms depending on what area of the body are infected. And of course, as I mentioned, it's difficult unless the laboratory has specialized equipment to really detect and isolate Candida auris. There's actually many different types of Candida fungus that are in the environment. Some are more common than the others, but we have things like Candida albicans, candida glabrata, candida tropicalis, candida crucii, and candida paracelosis. Most of those you've probably never heard of, but candida auris does seem to be spreading more rapidly in these healthcare settings, and it seems to be more virulent. An individual could be exposed to candida and with a healthy immune system really not display any symptoms at all, but if you are going to develop symptoms, it's common to see fevers and chills, and most of the time these people are going to get treated with antibiotics for a presumed bacterial infection, but then they're not going to get better because it wasn't a bacteria to begin with, and that will prompt the investigation into other causes like virus or fungi. Individuals with Candida auris can also experience fatigue, muscle aches, they can have hearing damage or drainage from the ears if the structures of the ear are infected. We may see wounds that don't heal, as well as urinary tract infections and bloodstream infections. The second question is, how can I protect myself or my loved ones from a Candida auris infection? Denise, get back inside the house! You lock your doors now! It's really important to note that so far the general population probably does not have a lot to worry about here. It's just spreading in healthcare facilities. But what if you work in a healthcare facility or you visit somebody that is in a long-term care facility like assisted living or a nursing home? The best way to protect yourself is to do the kinds of things that would protect you from really all microorganisms, bacteria, viruses, and fungi, is to have good hand hygiene. Keep yourself clean, keep the surfaces around you clean. Try to avoid the unnecessary use of antibiotics or other antifungal medications because that could contribute to resistant organisms. Candida auris has been shown to live on surfaces for up to 30 days, and so it is important to clean surfaces with an alcohol-based cleaner and allow that to dry completely. And the third question is, can Candida Candida auris be cured? Well, of course, as we noted, Candida auris treatment can be challenging because it has shown to be resistant to certain antifungal medications. But in working
working with infectious disease doctors, we may be able to treat this with a combination of various antifungal medications. Antifungal medications can be very effective, but they do come with their own risks, and it's important to be supervised by an infectious disease physician if you are being treated or a loved one is being treated for Candida auris. In addition to directly treating Candida auris, we can treat the symptoms of an infection by supportive care, making sure a person has good fluid, you know, hydration, oxygen, whatever they may need. We call that supportive care in the healthcare world. So in conclusion, Candida auris is a growing public health concern, but probably not something that you need to worry about in the general population. By staying informed and taking the regular precautions that you would against any other microorganism, you can keep yourself and your loved ones safe. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to watch the next one to help stay as healthy as you can, both inside and out. Mm -hmm.